Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Age of Overlord. We're going to do a Phantom Knights Horus deck profile with Omi. So, you've seen him on the channel before, he's done Heroes. But for now, Phantom Knight is back because of the Horus engine. And you can play Adventure. You can get away with discarding the Phantom Knight cards and that becoming a combo. So, yeah, we're going to go straight into it with the main deck. We are playing three copies of Imseti. Basically, it allows you to discard itself with one other card, add the King Sarcophagus. And then, once you do that, you get to draw a sword. This is a three off and I play one copy of Happy. You don't want to max out on these. You don't really need any more than one copy because you're always detaching it off a rank A or you're always like discarding. So these, these are always coming back because of King's sarcophagus. So what would you say is like great about the horror strategy? Like why is Phantom Knights good again? First off, this allows you to send cards from your hand to the grave. They live off of the graveyard. So that's like your secondary hand. So we are playing three copies of Torn Scales. Basically your Dark Ruffer of the deck. You know, you discard one card to send a Phantom Knight from your deck to the grave. And he has a graveyard effect as well, where a Phantom Knight, if he banishes itself, and special summon himself back from the grave. Three copies of Phantom Knight Silent Boots. If you control a Phantom Knight monster, he can special special himself. It's not an effect, it's, it's like an inherent summon. He has a graveyard effect where he can banish himself to add a Phantom Knight spell or trap card. When you have Rusty, you can literally set up two Fog Blades. We're playing two Ancient Cloak. You can play three of him, but I like him at two. Three can be a bit cloggy in the hand. If he's in the grave, you can banish him to add any of the Phantom Knight monsters. And then for the one of Phantom Knights, we are playing one Ragged Gloves. So what this does is, if he's in the graveyard, he can banish himself to special the Phantom Knight from the hand. He can banish himself to send any Phantom Knights cards from the deck to grave. If he's in your hand, if your Phantom Knight monster special summon, he can special himself. These are technically your Phantom Knight cards. So we are playing three copies of Torgite from the Underworld. We are playing Cherubini in this build. So this card is really good for summoning the BA monsters and then obviously setting up for more link place and to go with the tour guide three Kage Mutual Knight I do see people play only one or two but I like to see this in my hand if I have tour guide you know you can summon tour guide and then chain Kage Mutual. so it basically uh, chain blocks Ash Blossom. We're also playing the one jump forward. Sometimes this can come in clutch if you don't open up any of your other monsters and then now last for the BA monsters a one growth one seer and I am playing the one Libic. Uh, drawing this or having this in your hand really sucks. So this is why I decided to play him because if he's sent to the graveyard, he can actually summon Seer with three elves. We play three King Sarcophagus. It's actually broken in Phantom Knight because what it does is you send one card from your hand to the grave and it sends for cost and you do that and then you send one Horus monster from the deck to the graveyard. So before, before this, I had to rely on Forbidden droplets in the main, but now we have this. It's really good. Plus, it gives you access to rank eight plays. What would you say is the strongest rank eight uh, right now? What do you think are like the top three rank eights people should be playing for wars? Obviously, Vampire Zombie is good. Also, have number ninety Photon Lord. If you don't want to play into Nibiru, Photon Lord is good for that sense. Hope Harbinger as well, which is really good. He's there to protect your uh, protect your guys because if anyone, if any of the opponents wants to attack. They have to attack Harbinger first. You can also like uh, absorb a spell. Three triple tactics talents. Most of the time, when you're activating King Sarcophagus, you are likely to get ashed on that because first off, you're losing cards from your hand. Obviously, because I'm playing Phantom Knights, you know you have to play this card because going second, this card is busted. For the fact that your opponent cannot respond to it, depending on what card you used, you know what card you sent. Yeah, I think this card is really good, and also I think this card will make a comeback this format because obviously you have a rise heart band um i know shifter is still a card but i don't think you're likely to s come across shifter that much so called by the grave is basically my 40th card i didn't know exactly what else to play in the main it can stop uh she can stop shifter pretty much anything that activates in the grave it can it basically stops it uh, how badly does drone or bird affect your deck in my opinion i don't think yeah. it affects it that much because you're activating everything from the grave sure you can't search your fog blades or anything but i think that's the only thing it hurts it's just you searching the fog blade you could say pk is even better this format if people are playing drone <clears throat> and they're playing this pk it's not going to do much against them if it's not no and then for the traps we are playing three fog blades wings is basically there you just basically dump him off with either king sarcophagus or you can dump him off with torn skill and he's basically an extender from the graveyard so you banish target of phantom knight special summon it fog blade does the same thing set this with rusty and then search second one also one other thing uh fog blade can negate a five material noir because noir is unaffected by activated effects whereas it's a continuous effect so this deck can uh you know it can out in the noir so we're playing 
to uh, break sword. He's like, you can use him to obviously detach one, to target one card on the field and another target. And then he basically pops them both. Two is needed because the second one does come up in the grind game. I'm also playing the one uh, Raiders Knight. So basically going second, this deck can OTK out of nowhere. So if you underestimate it, you will get OTK'd. The way you bring him out is basically, basically with his uh, secondary effect. So what happens is if he gets destroyed, uh, via the your effect or any, any by any means basically he can special summon two phantom knights from the grave they become level four and then ba what you do after this you rank rank up into him and then his effect is you can detach one material from him and you can summon the up rebellion so his effect says that he cannot be destroyed by card effects and also you can detach one material from him he gains the attack of all other monsters on the field and his other effect is if he has a dark xyz material he can negate the effect of all other monsters on the field so he can you can literally otk the opponent with just him alone next we are playing the one levier i think one is fine because uh obviously you are banishing quite a lot you know, with your phantom knight so this is basically there to revive back your banished monsters so we are playing one number 90 galaxy ice yeah, photon Lord. and we're also playing the one uh, Hope Harbinger. You also have Zombie Vampire, so he's only there if you have an awkward hand or an awkward graveyard, so you can use him to basically mule your four cards. He can also revive a monster after he mules four cards. Most of the time, I don't really even go into him, because what happens is if I'm going second, uh, the Arc Rebellion is basically enough for me to win the game, because he gains the original attack and drops his basically half star attack, so one attack from him is basically lethal you make these cards so easily um you can actually make zeus pretty easily now as well so there is another xyz card that i would consider playing and that card is typhon i will highly suggest that you play it in this deck he's a walking floodgate you know he does shut off millennium millennium boards you know you can shut off synchro boards now we're going to go over to the link monsters so we play one cherubini i am playing two copies of sp little knight again if i had typhon i'll probably take one out but i think two is Actually, two is fine. I'm also playing the one Rusty Bardish. These are my link monsters. Uh, Cherubini is for the obvious reason because you're playing BAs. Obviously, Rusty is there because it's PK and access code is basically there. If you can't make Zeus, if you can't make your Arc Rebellion, then this is your next best thing. Wait, Fort, do you think you've run Dark the Dark Charmer, especially as well the Um, To be honest, I have considered Dark the Dark Charmer. You know, I really want to try out Palooza again. And I really want to try out, obviously, Dark the Dark Charmer. I want to try out the new XYZ. The Typhon card. Um, yeah, there is a lot of things I really want to try, try out. To round off the video, why do you think people should be looking at Phantom Knights Horus? I've been playing Phantom Knights uh, since 2019. Thing is, I really like the Phantom Knight deck, but um, I kind of stopped playing it because with cards like Ariza, Bestials, they do hurt the deck quite a lot. It kind of got power crypt as well, but with the introduction of the Horus cards, this deck can do well again this full map. Alright guys, so that was Omi's Phantom Knights Horus deck profile. Let me know what you want to see in the comments down below for the next one. Uh, I think Heroes is looking pretty good with uh, a Rise Heart Band, which means Dark Lord now takes the place as the best uh, Macro Cosmos going forward, which is a good tournament check as well, and a Phantom Knights Horus check. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see that video next. And with that being said, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.